In this video, I'm going to do a brief introduction to implicit differentiation, just kind of getting you to understand the underlying concepts of when and how this type of differentiation is different than other forms. Um, so first off, implicit differentiation is needed whenever the equation is in implicit form. Hopefully in a pre-calc class you went over that implicit form so you know what it means. Basically it means your x's and y's are all mixed up in your equation. All right, now, to find the derivative implicitly, you need to realize that the differentiation is taking place with respect to x. This means that when you differentiate terms involving just a plain x, of, of the x's alone, you can differentiate as usual. However, if you differentiate terms involving a y, you must apply a chain rule. Okay, so hopefully I'm going to demonstrate that right here. Okay, let's just say I'm taking the derivative of a plain x to the third. Okay, I am just taking the derivative of an x. All right, so in other words, my variables agree. Okay, my variables agree because I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. The variables agree, which means that I can just go ahead and use plain ordinary power rule. So derivative here is going to be a 3x squared. Okay, so use simple power rule. Let's even put that on here. Use power rule. Okay, now if I'm trying to take the derivative of, say, a y to the third, okay, notice now that the variables disagree. I'm trying to take the derivative with respect to x, but I've got a y to the third in there. So my variables disagree. All right, which means when I take the derivative, I have to apply a chain. That's your implicit differentiation. I've got to apply a chain rule here. All right, so I'm going to do power rule like normal, so 3y squared, but then the inside function is a y, so I'm going to put a y prime in there. Okay, that's where I have a chain rule. So then I'm going to put use chain rule. And that basically is what this implicit differentiation is. Now, a lot of times, all right, for, for in my classes, I use the y prime notation, okay? Um, a lot of times we get a dy over dx. I, I see a lot of videos I, on YouTube. I see a lot of worksheets where they use different notation. They don't use the prime notation, all right? They use that dy over dx. And the reason I don't and the reason I choose to use the prime is because it, to me, seems like a less cluttered notation. It means the exact same thing. It's just, you know, two different mathematicians came up with the two different ways of, you know, writing what a derivative is, you know, the prime notation versus that dy over dx, all right? But to me, having that dy over dx right there makes it a lot more cluttered. So in if you watch any of my videos with implicit differentiation, I always use a y prime right there, and that's why. I just think it, it makes it a much more cleaner problem. Okay, now, I want to look at this from like a graphical standpoint as well, okay? Right here, I've got an equation of a circle, x squared plus y squared equals 4, all right? And I've attempted to draw a nice little circle there with radius 2. All right, I have a random point on the circle that I've marked as x, y, okay? Now, what I already have drawn on here is I have the tangent line drawn at that point x, y, and then I have the normal line, okay? And at this point, hopefully, you have already been taught that the normal line and the, and the tangent line are perpendicular to each other, okay? Now, I can, from this drawing, I can calculate the slope of that normal line because it's just rise over run, right? So the change in my y's over the change in my x's, well, if that points x, y, well, then that means my slope is just a y over x, okay? Then, all right, knowing that the normal line and the tangent line are perpendicular to each other, perpendicular lines should have negative reciprocal slopes, so then that means the slope of my tangent line should be negative x, y, okay? Now, if that's the case, all right, think back to what a derivative is. When you calculate the derivative, you're calculating the slope of the tangent line at a given point, right, or in general, any point along the curve. So then, if that's the case, I should be able to take the equation of that circle, which is the x squared plus y squared equals 4. I should be able to 
implicitly differentiate this because it's in implicit form. I should be able to take the derivative of this. So I should be able to say, okay, I'm going to take the derivative of the left-hand side, d dx of x squared plus y squared. And then d dx of the right side because I've got to take the derivative of both sides of my equation here. All right, so now this term right here is a plain x. I'm taking the derivative with respect to x. My variables agree. So I'm just going to do ordinary derivative there, which is a 2x. Okay, now when I take the derivative d dx of y squared, my variables do not agree. So I've got to remember, okay, this is a y term. I have to include a chain. So I'm y squared. I'm going to take the derivative like normal. So 2y and then y prime put that chain in there every time. Equals, all right, over here, derivative of a constant is just going to be zero. Okay, now if I do a little arithmetic to this, all right, let's um, solve this for y prime, which would be my derivative. Okay, so let's subtract 2x from both sides. So 2y, y prime equals a negative 2x. All right, and then let's divide both sides by 2y because I want to solve for my derivative or solve for my y prime. All right, so let's go ahead and actually show that step. So divide by 2y and divide by 2y. 2y and 2y is going to go away over here. And I can cross out the 2 and the 2 on the right-hand side. So then I'm left with y prime is equal to negative x over y. So I have implicitly differentiated this equation. All right, when I take the derivative, I should have the slope of the secant line. And I've already, from the picture, from a graphical standpoint, I already calculated the slope of that line being negative x over y. And when I calculated it algebraically using implicit differentiation, I got the exact same result. All right, so. Um, just um, one quick little example of implicit differentiation, hopefully a better understanding for you of what implicit differentiation is, why you do the things you do, all right, why do you, you know, put the chain only on the y's, hopefully, you know, that got the point was made clear in this, all right. Um, I'll definitely do more videos with some examples of implicit differentiation so that we can just practice the problems and check them out. So be sure and check out the channel for more videos on implicit differentiation. Thanks for watching.